supposed to work? Oh. Okay, good. So I have a lot of equipment here, I feel like Robocop, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems to be working. So my name is Ryan uh, Johansson, and a uh, brief history about me. So uh, I've worked most of my life uh, with the server-side development, mostly highly scalable server-side. I was seven years uh, responsible for Skype patent systems, uh, helping people to communicate. Uh, then I've also worked for a year in TransferWise, helping to make money transfer better, and now I'm in taxi business, helping, <laughs> helping to get this business a bit, a bit better. Uh, so what I will talk about today is uh, what are Taxify products actually. So most of you, I hope, have used Taxify. Uh, if you can please raise your hand who has used it. Uh, okay, uh, can you raise hands who hasn't used it? Okay, who hasn't used it, you can download that and test it out. It will be easier to understand. <laughs> uh, so then I will talk about Taxify systems, what we have, and also about uh, mobile app design, um, how we are building mobile apps, which is one part of the system. And then I will have some time for questions and answers. Uh, if you have questions in the meantime, then short questions are fine. Uh, just not long ones, but if you have a question, just raise your hand and I'll try to answer this. So, um, like I saw a lot of raised hands, so I've used Taxify, so this is that that you have used. But this is only one part of Taxify systems. So, actually, we have a lot of <coughs> customers. Uh, so, we have clients, customers who order a taxi. Then we have taxi drivers who are also our customers. Then we have taxi company managers. So these are the people who are responsible for their taxi company and they need to be able to manage their taxi drivers, meaning adding cars, adding new drivers, configuring prices, uh, looking at statistics, all kind of different, different areas what they need to know about this. Then we have taxi for region admins. So these are the people who help Taxify to work in a certain city. And uh, they need all the access to the uh, city or location. Uh, by location, I mean country, uh, statistics. Uh, also uh, manage everything about, um, about this region. And they need also access to all kinds of data what we have in the systems. And they have a lot of requests to our engineering team. And then we have down there dispatchers, which are the old style way ordering taxis, basically call centers. And um, as we are transforming this business to be mobile app based, we still have to support the old way of calling a taxi. And that's why if we are converting a company to nowadays technology, we need to support the old way of uh, phone based systems and that's why we need to take care of the dispatchers also. And in between, so we have our cloud systems which connect all these. Uh, so now I'm going into the systems view. So I looked at the customers which we have to support and now I'm going into the, more into the systems and applications. Uh, so here we have client applications. So we have different platforms. We have Android, we have iPhone, we have Windows Phone which is not ready yet. Uh, I already heard <laughs> a question, but uh, basically it's, it's in alpha version, so we are internally testing it, and we want to roll it out as soon as possible. Same way goes to the web application, web-based application. So you can order taxi from browser. We have a beta, beta version out there, which you can use, but uh, we are building a new one. Then on the other side, we have driver applications. So most of the drivers, for example, in Thailand are using Android phones, but if you go into some other countries, uh, for example in Netherlands, 90% of taxi drivers have iPhones. So it's a totally, totally different uh, uh, need uh, depending on the market. Uh, then we have this taxi company management, what they talk, what taxi company owners use. So we need to have a 
web interface where they can access all the data and enter, enter to the system. Then we have our back office systems to access the data. And like I told the old way of uh, phone-based systems, we have, we have built a dispatcher system, which is HTML5 based application, but which we support for the uh, taxi companies. And there we need to do integrations with different uh, VoIP providers. So it's voice over IP. So if, if you have an incoming call, we need to integrate this to our system so we see the caller's ID, so caller's phone number, and connect, uh, can connect it to the driver. And this is uh, usually integration with uh, PBX systems, what uh, taxi companies use in the call centers. And so our solution is to connect all those. <laughs> so, so, so main thing about this was that we don't have only the, like like client application that we use, but we have actually many customers, many systems that we have to support and connect. Uh, so how we have solved this? So we are not using one big hammer to solve the solution. We have many smaller ones. So this means that uh, our architecture is service-oriented architecture based on Node.js. Uh, all services are stateless and state is saved in a database or in a storage depending on the service. By storage I mean it can be different storage, it can be file system, it can be NoSQL database, some cloud storage, uh, doesn't matter, but main thing is that uh, state is always in a, in a storage. There is one exception which I will talk about later on. And uh, what else we have uh, done is uh, we have geographical location awareness in the system. So basically it means that we are routing the client to the closest server and also by that way we are uh, giving good availability. Uh, for example, if something happens in Tallinn region, it doesn't affect uh, people in Amsterdam. And this data is, I will get to that, but this data is something which we don't need to replicate always. Um, all services are independent and they own the data, which means that if you want to access the data, you need to go through service. And service takes care about the consistency of the data and how it's accessed and, and uh, also checking the data, whether it's allowed there. Uh, there is a small exception which I will talk about later on again. Uh, and most of the data storage in, is in relational database, uh, in master-master replication, and we are using a proxy in front, so we are routing all the write queries to one database, and read queries we are distributing among uh, many nodes. Uh, and yeah, like I said, if you have any like, quick questions, just raise your hand. And yeah, Can you give us some examples of services just to conceptualize it? Sorry? Can you give us some examples of the services? Uh, I will go, there's going to be services in the next slide. Uh, so why, why we have chosen Node.js? So Node.js was based on how it got started was that it was actually Google Chrome and Google Chrome used uh, really optimized V8 JavaScript engine, and then somebody thought that oh, it's a good idea to use it on server side also, and it actually was a good idea. <laughs> and what came out is that it's uh, very su suitable for service-oriented architectures. So first of all, it's um, event-driven. So who has used Node.js by the way? So we have a few few people. So Node.js, who, who hasn't, then uh, Node.js is uh, asynchronous. So everything you do uh, is done asynchronously, which means that if you fire a request, let's say you need to do three three requests to three queries to database. You fire one request, you usually in a synchronous way wait for the answer, then do the another one. In Node.js, you can do everything asynchronously. You you fire those three uh, simultaneously. They are um, executed in parallel and then you get the callback to your function when the result is ready and every time you need to put the callback. So this is asynchronous and it's very suitable for high performance applications and also for uh, service-oriented architecture. 
Um, and it's very lightweight and uh, really big high, high throughput, so you can put a lot through that because it uh, is optimized for that. What I very much uh, like uh, about it, it's uh, fully optimized for HTTP. So you have everything what you need for nowadays applications. So you don't need to add extra libraries or anything like that. You can, you can write web server in five lines of code. So it's, it's pretty good. And it's, it will perform right away very well. I mean, you don't need to do anything extra. Uh, one, one other thing is, is really this having it's a single threaded. So some people say, yeah, it's, it's bad that Node.js is single threaded. There is support being built for being multi-threaded. But I think it's really good that it's single threaded. Because it, uh, first of all, it uh, um, makes it very easy to develop. So you don't do all the synchronization errors and all the trading errors, which is very hard to develop and most people don't get right. And another thing is that it forces you to think about the design upfront. So if you're building a service or some server single threaded and, and you have a let's say 24 core machine and you always know that you can maximally use one, one core of this so 1 24th of the machine capacity then you have to think how to have multiple versions of this service and this is really good because you get many things right away uh, you get scalability, horizontal scalability because you have to think about this upfront uh, also you get uh, good scale so you can uh, uh, use the machine's capaci capacity and, um, and also you get availability. So if you are doing load balancing right, you can take one service down, another up. And this is a key for being ready for cloud. So you get actually many, many things from this. So that's why I think it's very, very good that it's single threaded. Uh, yeah, and so it's, it's scripting language. So there is no build. You don't need to build anything. So it's... Um, ready uh, right away because it's scripting language and that means it's really fast to develop test so who has done like front-end development knows about like how, how easy it is to test on the front-end but this is for, for back-end really easy and uh, if I remember, remember correctly it was uh, found that Node.js was first released 2009 and so it's, it's not that long time ago and currently it's so popular that it's supported by all the cloud providers. It's supported by Microsoft Azure, Amazon Elastic Cloud, Google App Engine, everybody is moving there. Many, many big, big companies have moved to Node.js just because of that, because of this async, asynchronous, well, you have to think about design, well scalable, good throughput. So, so it has worked for us very well also. But now I'm getting to the like, examples of services, what was asked. Uh, uh, so first of all, let's, let's look at driver. Uh, so we have drivers driving around, right, or being somewhere. Uh, first of all, we need to know, uh, first of all, drivers need to be able to log in and get their data about their car, what is the rate, all those, all the specifics. And this is done by driver service. One service responsible for this. Uh, what we also need is uh, track all the time where the car is. This is uh, from one point of view really interesting uh, statistical problem, how we can analyze the data and, and see uh, patterns. What is the best way to get the client, where are the peaks and so on. But from another point of view there are regulations which need uh, this, by regulations which, by which we need to store this data. And this is one service taking care of it. And this is the storage which uh, is in file storage, uh, like storage layer is uh, in, the, in the file system, because it gets a lot of data. So do you mean that mm -hmm. they actually store all these GPS points uh, that driver passed for, for how many years or days or what? Um, Currently, from the beginning. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we will store everything. And this is uh, needed by regulation. Uh, for example, uh, 
for understanding the uh, scale of things, how many is high performance or how many requests per second per year, whatever you are storing or serving. Uh, so, I will give a bit general answer. So, it's in hundreds, not in thousands, uh, requests in a second. Hundreds per second? Yes, per second. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, then we have uh, another problem um, to solve. So, we need to know, or actually, we need to connect clients and drivers, right? So, what we need to do is uh, get information about driver in real time. So driver is updating our one service which we call polling. <laughs> it's a bit tricky name, it can be pushing service also because driver is pushing updates. But on another hand it gets uh, information back about orders. So we can argue about name but this is how we named it. And uh, what we do, then we group those requests. So this happens like every few seconds. We get updates from all the drivers around the uh, areas that we support. And we save it in this polling service. And from there, we bundle it together and send it to search service. And search service is something what, if you want to order a, a taxi, your client app is connecting to. And search service then is uh, actually has a bit of state, so it has in-memory database because it needs to be really fast to find the car. And I will get into the details on next slide, but this basically answers what is the best car to be ordered for this client. So basically it puts the locations together and gives the best match for this client. And then client fires an order and from this polling service uh, driver gets the order and can choose whether to accept or not. And also we have this old school stuff which we have to support. So dispatchers need to also be able to search for the best driver. They have also a map where they can see all the drivers in the city for their company. Like dispatchers are pair taxi company. So they can see the taxis there, but also they can search for the best one. And then we have other services. Static companies is uh, for some uh, less changing data, which is serving that. So we want to keep up as simple as possible and as much as possible on the server side. Then we have two things which are in development. One is campaign system, so basically it's a referral system. If you want to do, somebody refers a code to you and you can get some discount or there is some event and we give out codes, uh, all this system. It's, it's, it can be said as referral or, or campaign system, so it, it depends how you name it, but it, it, it has a lot of functionality actually. And then we have one interesting area is the corporate system, which is uh, not so straightforward. So this is um, uh, quite, quite a big share of taxi market actually in some countries. And this is the way when there is a company which makes a contract with the taxi company that they can ride with the taxi company and pay afterwards. And currently how it works, it's, it's pretty clever stuff, so they, they get some coupons and then they give to the taxi drivers, then they get check and then they <laughs> give check back and then taxi driver gives the coupon to the company and then they do some calculations and it's never right. So, <laughs> so, so this is something that we want to solve also. And uh, what it means that, um, that basically user can buy, pay with a corporate payment in the taxi. So if you are corporate customer, choose this way to pay. You can order the taxi, jump in, get where you want to, and jump out. And no hassle with, with some crazy coupons and, and stuff. So uh, is this already in, in, in development or it's done? It's in development. So mostly how we move with uh, our, our systems is that first we do the backend, and then it, it becomes available in the apps. And I will tell about the apps a bit later. So all of these different Node.js uh, um, services, how many of these are running on the same machine or they're all, each one of them has their own machines for different areas or? 
so usually we are grouped in uh, different services uh, or many services on one machine. But they can be uh, all services are stateless, so it, it doesn't matter which which machine handles the query. Uh, there is one state stateless service, uh, some, one service with state, which is search. I will talk about this a bit. Uh, here is, by the way, a map with uh, the taxes in different area. Uh, so, yep. Yeah. Yeah, question mm -hmm. regarding the regulations. You say there is some regulation to stop, but uh, uh, why do those regulations apply to you? Isn't, isn't it a driver uh, responsibility to meet those? Uh, no. Uh, for example, in Hungary, in Budapest, where we are operating, there is a regulation that we have to store every route about the driver, always. So it's it's a regulation by the country, so so we can do so not much can, about this. I just don't understand. You help the client to find uh, the taxi, mm -hmm. and uh, by doing this, you're obligated to store all his movement. That's uh, not 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 only client movement, but driver movement. So driver can be with client. It can be driving just without any reason. It can be somewhere else. So probably it's uh, it's some maybe maybe something criminal or what, whatever. They need need the data if it's possible to get. Then it's good. So it's it's a uh, like regulation. Okay, but if, if <laughs> the driver doesn't use taxi find, is uh, is someone else? Uh, Fulfilling this responsibility, actually. Uh, yes. Every they, time someone who tracks this. Uh, yeah, they have built them some black boxes which are tracking devices. Yes. Yes. So, so, so the driver has to, or someone has to track the drivers. Yes, it's it's pretty new requ requirement, but might be related to Uber stuff. Do you see yeah. in Hungary? Yes. Okay, uh, so. Going here, so this is the search service what I talked about. So this is uh, in memory. So it's a multi-dimensional binary search tree where we store the longitude and latitude from the driver, and this helps to find the best match for the client for the, by the distance. So it's also known as KD tree, and this is something which we are. Uh, keeping in memory and rebuilding all the time. This service bundles the request together and sends every second to the, this node. And this is rebuilding the tree, and by that we are finding the closest one. But mm -hmm. you are just searching for closest, not calculating the route? Because, for example, if you take you know, the same Luxembourg, one mm -hmm. taxi can be up on the hill, which takes, I don't know, 20 minutes to go yeah, down. Good, yeah, good, good question about that. Yeah. Uh, Going back, yeah, sorry, I, what I forgot to say is that uh, all these are uh, geographically located closest to the client. So, for example, uh, and this is, uh, this is driven by our business. Um, most of the uh, rides are in, in the area, so in, in like 50 kilometer radius or even less, 10 kilometer radius. So, in, in a city. So, mostly it's not more than 50 kilometers. Uh, once, once we tested one competitive application and, and uh, you search a taxi in Dart and it offered Thailand taxis, so that's, that's not very useful. Uh, and so th these are all geographically located uh, for the area. For example, for Thailand we have one set of data, for Minsk in Belarus we have different set. And this means that they are have different availability also. And, and so this is also by, for the region, the search node and this in-memory database. And, uh, and looking how well like Node.js responds, so we have 90% of uh, requests below 4 milliseconds to this service. And uh, coming back to your question, so currently we are calculating the distance straight, but uh, there is also regulation for that, but uh, we need really street distance. And for that we are using Google Distance Matrix, another service, uh, which can give us the 
shortest distance by the street. So if there is a river or hill where you can't go over, then it gives the real distance. So actually what we are doing is calculating a bunch of uh, test matches on our direct distance, then sending query to the Google distance matrix, and this is rearranging those by the actual uh, distance by the street, and also uh, taking into account traffic jams, and also giving uh, average arrival, arrival time. So this is really cool features, so what we want to launch, so that we don't it's order. Uh, it's not launched, but coming out pretty soon. But you actually see the distance in minutes by actual time. So, Already? I mean, it's coming out, oh, but, okay, but okay. this is what, how it's on. Yeah. The, the service cost? It's, it's uh, yeah, uh, tens of thousands. <laughs> so it's pretty expensive. For you, the price is not important. The uh, price so of a taxi is not important. Price of the taxi? Taxi. No, it has nothing to do with this. So there is no option to sort by tax rate currently. Uh, <laughs> Given the so, yeah. so yeah, so yeah, this is a margin. yeah, this is a good question. So currently we we haven't implemented it. I mean, technically it would be very easy, but but <laughs> it, it's a it's a choice. <laughs> So, uh, so in overall, we want to give the best experience for the customer. So, what we are choosing the closest taxi, and then by rating and, and so on. But but we can we can tune the algorithms as it's needed. For a, for a maybe two three week period, there was an option of an eco or not eco. Yes. So were you running an A/B test to see whether? Yes. And what were the saying that you turned that off as a result that the extra tap was not worth it? Uh, let's say it depends on the market. But good question. Yeah, one more there. How do you evaluate the open street up uh, business so, uh, solution uh, compared to Google? Uh, so we haven't evaluated that. Okay. Uh, Yes, so this, this uh, drove the need for the, this, this service. And like I said, uh, Node.js works really well for such services. So you can add services via request in parallel and it goes well. And uh, this is a view from 31st December this year. And uh, what you see, the line means that taxi is busy. <laughs> So what happened is that uh, uh, we got a pretty big load and uh, it's usually quite impossible to get a taxi because all the taxis are driving. And uh, this is a more close view from that center of city of Tallinn. And if you, if you look, look at the legend, then uh, uh, red one is driving with client. Then the uh, purple one is just busy, so this meant that it, he got an order through the dispatch system or some, some other way. Then yellow ones, like this one, this is uh, uh, driving uh, to the client. And we have some free ones also here, so this is free. This is free. <laughs> a few others. <laughs> so, and it was really interesting. Um, so, do you want to look at this more? No. But actually, mm -hmm. like you say that the yellow one is driving with the client, and the red one is busy. But the yellow and red are always connected, so it's the same taxi actually. Or am I wrong? No. Yellow is client. Yeah, sorry, yellow one is client. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so line line connects the client and the taxi. Yeah. Sorry. It doesn't look very efficient. Yeah. Long lines. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is how it is. Yeah. Because I mean, people were happy to get the taxi at that time. But yeah, so going for <laughs> further, so looking at what happened on our service-oriented backend, so these are the loads on the service nodes, 
And what we saw here, this is the search node. It got five times bigger load. But what happened with one other service, it got 10 times bigger load. And this shows very, very well that uh, different services need different scale. And it, it was a simple, simple thing. It's expected to be that way. It's expected to be that way because uh, there is a business requirement that we need to do two queries to this service if this one gets one. But what is the interesting part is if we look at this line on 13th December, it was here. Then at 31st December night, it was here. So this shows what, what I told about single threaded and forcing to think about design. So this shows that we can very well scale those as we need because we will have different scale by different services. Okay, then uh, moving forward to data ownership in the service-oriented architecture. So uh, here is a s example with one, one service. There is driver applications are talking to, to the driver Node.js service, which is talking to database. And here I just included just a view of the database. Mm, we have uh, around 10 services and all those are similar pattern. Uh, although this is most complex database, so other services have smaller database. And then looking at the back office, so how to connect uh, services with uh, back office. So back office is written in PHP. This is here. And back office is very modular. So it has specific modules and every module is talking to one database. So basically maximum what is shared is service talks to the database and according module from the back office. And all, all services and modules in the back office are the same way. So it means that there's no way that you have from back office and accessing all the data or, or screwing some things up. All have different usernames, different restrictions. It's really separated. So th this is, uh, in some sense, a bit shortcut. It could talk to driver node, then it would be purely only by service. But this is like the compromise that we have done. So it's module, modular and service oriented. Uh, yeah, so the people who know me, <laughs> I know some people from here, so they know that I really much appreciate uh, for engineers to be able to release. Uh, there shouldn't be any restriction to release software. <laughs> it should be as simple as possible. And what we spent like uh, two, three days building a release tool. So what it means that you can define the servers where you want to release. You can define applications or services. You can define release configurations. Release configurations are then based on the location. I mean, whether it's uh, Tallinn or some other country or other city where we have the location-based services. And uh, about server configuration. Uh, like, I mean, physical server. If it's 24 core, maybe we want to run it one way. If it's one core machine, maybe other way. So. Uh, then we have builds, which is actually putting the server configuration and region configuration together. Uh, because in Node.js, you don't need to build anything. It's actually configuration build. And then we have releases here. And I don't have a picture here, but in releases, we get like full log about the release. Was it successful? Were there any problems? How it worked? And this will be our kind of technical release notes. So about every release, we have information there. If something went wrong, we can do it and re-release. And it means we don't have actually no full-time server admins on board. Although we have like uh, hundreds of thousands of customers. Yeah? Uh, do we don't have different code bases for Tallinn and Kiev, but we have different configurations. 
because the code base is the same. But we have the different code bases for services. But do you use, use any ORMs? Uh, no. 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 No ORM. So we use uh, all the advanced features from the uh, SQL, uh, like uh, union queries and um, sub queries and like, like all the features which, which are not always supported in ORM. Uh, ah, yeah, it's uh, MySQL and in master master replication. Uh, okay, and yeah, we have the Vox model. So I don't know how many are familiar with that. Basically, it means development and operations together. Uh, it's uh, it's more driven by the cloud uh, systems where you can do everything on your own, you don't need anybody to, to watch your, your stuff. Uh, we have here a balance, so we have server admins uh, monitoring all the like, hardware level things, like if it's really happa something happening, like uh, a network issue or, or some other issue, then they are taking care of that. But everything regarding applications is in full control for engineers. So we almost don't talk, talk with them because there's no need. Uh, we are releasing, we are taking care, we are responsible. Mm -hmm. Final question, how big you are? Sorry? How big you are, I mean, personal-wise? Uh, yeah, so we are over 30 people now. But if you're talking about engineering, then this is in the range of 10. In the range, I mean, because not everybody is full-time, so. Uh, okay, uh, was there any question about this? No? Can uh. uh, you run your stack locally? Uh, yes. So all, all different services. Uh, how, yeah. how do you manage that? How does the developer needs to go? Who, who's new to your project? How does he start all these different services to get tax free running locally? Uh, yes, it's, it's pretty easy actually. So you need the databases which you can install and Node.js itself is, um, I don't know from here, but it's like few megabytes. So you install that and that's it. You can run it on Mac, on Windows, on Linux. But you still have to start getting service manually? Uh, yes. So we have actually created a script which uh, uh, starts all services. But uh, it was very straightforward. It shouldn't take more than a few hours. Okay, so now I move to other topics. So I think what is specific about Taxify is that we have like really highly scalable backend systems, uh, which are uh, actually real-time systems. If we have any downtime in the systems, we get the call in maximum 120 seconds because people can't work. Um, and also customers can order a taxi. So we have our real-time system and backend systems in one side. And another part which is more visible to the end customer is mobile apps. So you can combine two things like doing like uh, working really closely with designers and UX design and then on another hand connect those with uh, backend systems. And about back, uh, sorry, about the client mobile app. So, client mobile app is like our number one priority is user experience. So this is what we are everything optimized, optimizing for. And and um, so for example, we we are two click taxi apps. So you basically confirm the location and then order taxi. So. We are trying to make it as hassle-free and as easy as possible to do that. And this is example f uh, for the sign-up, uh, which is coming out soon. Uh, we, we are asking for some few extra information, like your email, which will be compulsory and so on. And this is like a design view, how it goes. And we are spending a lot of time on those designs, going back and forth, thinking about everything, like. Uh, what happens if you don't press back, but uh, like not on the button, but press on the mobile phone back button? What happens then? Uh, what should you do when you get a call in the middle of entering this? 
what happens if uh, if uh, people uh, uh, can't can't put uh, or put up in the background and then come back some later time. Or some people are even don't know that well phones. They just killed up if they need to do something and then expect to come to the same state what it was before. So we have to think about all those cases. And uh, what we are maybe maybe simple example is here. So first you need to sign up. So there is the country code. Uh, so it's uh, like three digits plus plus sign. So you can enter this, but the question is, can we can we repopulate this for you? So if we can, maybe we need to turn on GPS in the background to be certain about location or IP-based location, whatever. If we can detect the uh, country code, we will do that because you lose or you uh, save four clicks. So. This is how we are trying to optimize all those things. And not to mention about uh, all smaller things, about fonts, colors, usability. So this is what we are spending a lot of time. And, and, and looking at apps, the usage pattern for client app is like most of the times, maybe 60 seconds, maybe 220 seconds, uh, 120 seconds. So one, two minutes max. So it needs to be as simple as possible. Um, yep. Are you building like fully native apps or are you using yes. uh, fully native? The, of the 10 developers you have in the team, how many are working in mobile apps? Please repeat the question. Yeah, uh, we, are, we are using native app. Yeah, the question was, uh, are, are we developing natively? Yes, we are developing native apps. And, uh, how mm -hmm. many of the developers are working in mobile apps? Mm, around five. Yeah, okay. Uh, then about releasing. So, if you need to release mobile app to hundreds of thousands of people, it means if Two percent have crashes, then two dozen people have problem. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> so, so what we are doing is uh, we are doing uh, different levels of testing. So, first level is alpha testing. This means that actually every Taxify user is testing. Uh, sorry, not Taxify user, but every Taxify employee is forced to <laughs> test. <laughs> Even if it's a buggy app, we need we need uh, we need all this help to test. And uh, we have a rule actually that all employees need to drive for 50 euros with our app every month. <laughs> so it's a good rule. <laughs> uh, actually, it, it's a good rule also because you can talk with our other customers who are taxi drivers. So you get two, two way benefit. I was talking also, I got almost late here because the taxi driver had so many good suggestions. <laughs> So uh, then we have, uh, so this is actually the real result from alpha testing of our current application. And as you see, it's, it's Android. And uh, Android iOS, they have different challenges. In iOS, uh, sorry, in Android, you have many OS versions. You see, we have 30 people, and this is the test from, I think, around 20 people. So look how many different combinations you have. You have different operating system versions. You have a lot of different phones, which have different bugs and issues. And yeah, you have like six resolutions, which you have to support. And all resolutions have some tiny changes, which you have to take, take into account. Mm, for example, in some smaller, uh, smaller uh, resolution phones, uh, Google Maps has some, some problems, which we have to solve. And all these come out only through testing. So we get full log about this and monitoring this. And the next phase is uh, beta testing, like uh, getting it to a bit wider uh, amount of people, like friends and, and people we know and who really want to test the latest app. And then the, yeah, then the next step is gradual rollout. I'm talking about Android mostly, bro. Currently. So we roll it out to 5% of customers, monitor closely, 
if everything's fine, then increasing to 10, then 20 percent, then 30 percent. So if you're comparing that with your friend and you have newer version, then you are the lucky one. <laughs> In that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you think that uh, you know that uh, it, it takes a lot of time to test in all the devices. Do you think uh, this is because uh, Uber uh, sent a phone to the to the to the taxi drivers because they want to standardize the, the same device in all the in all the taxi drivers? Mm -hmm. uh, about Uber, yeah. Yeah, uh, send the, the, mm -hmm. the device. Yeah. So the question was that uh, testing takes a lot of time. Like because there are so many different versions and different hardware and different resolutions, so, and Uber has taken the approach to send locked phone to their drivers, and this is the reason, yeah, because we need to only support one hardware, also so it's I much found easier. That iOS has a much better GPS uh, than other devices. Uh, yeah, I can't comment that. <laughs> I, uh, we have different different results, so I mean we have one way we see it, it is better, in other cases we see it's not, so there's no like single answer. But yeah, when we move to iOS, then with iOS uh, we have different challenges. Uh, with iOS we have to release to everybody at once, because um, Apple doesn't have the support for gradual rollout, and they have a nice feature that you have to, when you sub submit the application, then they have seven days to review it. So, which means if you submit the uh, application with some bugs, then you have to wait seven days until you get fixed out. And yeah, that's that's not not so good. So there was a question from. How do you collect the hashing? Sorry, I didn't hear hashing. Crashing. Crashing. Crashing data, yeah, we are using crash analytics. A tool. Yeah. Uh, how frequent your mobile and server side releases? Uh, how often do we do mobile releases? Mobile and server like, Yeah, uh, server re uh, side releases we can do as often as we want. So it's it's uh, by the by the engineers to decide when they wish to release. We have currently set the schedule weekly, just just to have uh, some cadence that people know that the okay, it's coming out. But mobile, we are um, more moving. We had like two weeks releases, but we are slowly moving to be more more often, maybe even weekly. So, so making yeah, it's smaller. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Another question about testing on the server side. Uh, mm -hmm. How you are testing? So it's clear like, you can test an application. How you are testing integration of uh, all components you have? Uh, Yes, we have a few integration tests, and actually there's some manual testing because we are doing like we have our own tool to simulate both driver and uh, client. So we are doing integration tests with that. But in in automation way, we don't have like in that sense integration tests. We are treating every service as it would be third-party service. For example, we are not testing Google distance matrix, whether it works, but we are treating the same way our services. So this service has a contract which it needs to provide, and we believe it works that way. And uh, yeah, it would be interesting to say is we couldn't have zero bugs in the backend side. So. As you know. So. Uh, yeah, that we know. There's always one, one, one more there. <laughs> but, but yeah, but we don't have like tens or hundreds, so. Yeah. Do you have version not supported? <laughs> Exception like you know uh, someone is not updating his mobile version and you have developed for, for a year or something totally new and you cannot support yeah. with all requests and all other strategies? Uh, we, we don't officially like uh, um, block any versions, so to say. So if it, it works, but it might have like not the best experience if it's like really really old phone, like somehow like I very low. Some time ago, I had a really old iPhone, so the operating system wasn't upgraded to the last one already, and the the taxi phone didn't work. Also. Okay. That was. Yeah. So. But it gave an error mm -hmm. message that I cannot connect to servers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. But but anyway, we are trying. Yeah, not 
where we are concentrating more on the newer ones. And of course we can see, we have all the statistics about the operating system version, so if it's in the like, like lower range, then of course and we are not putting much effort there. Most, mostly the newer ones. And actually we have Android 5.0 here, which has some new, new issues, so every version is a challenge. <laughs> Okay, but moving on. So driver application. Uh, there we have uh, again different requirements. So when we talked about client application, then client uses the application for like two minutes if all, all fine, right? Uh, driver uses the application for usually 10 hours a day. So, so it's totally different uh, requirement. Uh, Driver application needs to be stable, uh, crash-free. It can't have any memory leaks. So this is uh, uh, so we need need to be sure that it works like really 10 hours a day and it's easy to use. And also because they are using it every day and doing the rights, uh, it's it's the same uh, requirement to have as few clicks as possible, as few interactions as possible. Uh, by the way, interesting fact, this email means that uh, many drivers got their first email with Taxifier. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so we did a lot of good to community, they can now email. Um, uh, what else is uh, um, interesting is, is localization. So here I mean uh, rules by different uh, countries. So there's a lot of small things, I don't mean like uh, translations, uh, I mean really localizations. For example, we have rate by the, uh, waiting rate is by, by hour. Some countries have by minute, so you have to support this. Uh, or in Finland you have really nice pricing scheme, so it's not about the per kilometer price plus waiting rate, but they have a big table, like if you, if you are alone, you have this price, if two persons, this price, and then till 16 people. So, <laughs> so you have to support this. The point doesn't even matter, right? as far as I'm concerned, the taxi drivers are using their own taxi meter, and the application does not calculate cost on the run. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, so that's a good question, but, but uh, as the world is changing, so uh, why, why, why not to use the application to do that, so uh, but regulation? Uh, yes, actually if you see here, this is upcoming version, so we calculate the price, and which can be used in some countries, South Africa or some other countries where it's allowed. And actually, some companies do that, <laughs> like Uber. Uh, so, so you can you can do that, and uh, we have it also, and you can enter the price. And this is about upcoming features, but but it will be there uh, because we can do a lot with this yeah, price. Yeah, I was wondering. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it it's on my phone, so that's yeah. why I was Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, and also like notifications about drivers. So we need to notify driver forgets to enter right. Okay, we notify after some time out that please set yourself free again, and all those things. So little things because they are not like all technology people. The, there are a few who are like big fans who are in our beta testing group, but uh, most most people are just. Usual people have done this for many years, 20 years, and they're really new to that. So we have to make it as simple as possible. Uh, so what I talked about, then a little summary. So I talked about our approach, how we have solved the server-side systems. It has worked very well with, for us. Uh, it's uh, asynchronous real-time system. Uh, then about mobile apps, how we build those and what are the requirements there. Uh, then currently we are operating or about to launch in nine countries. And team is 30 people big already. And uh, from my side I think the most interesting 
uh, from from the engineering point of view, most interesting thing about Texelfa is that uh, you can build real-time systems, really complex on the backend side, and on the other side you have like really like soft values, like how to build the best user experience on the app side. Like so, it's so easy to use. So you can reduce some clicks and make it really simple. So this is this is like combining those two. So this is the biggest challenge. Uh, we have spent like uh, days arguing about some icon and does it make simpler? What happens if you press there? So combining those two is the really really interesting area. Uh, yeah, uh, there is some growth rate until August 2014. I won't tell the I can't tell the latest numbers, but how many this jumps to system we have in that last quarter? I think at that time it was pretty big, um, but uh, so this is cumulative. Yeah. Is all the what does it mean? Monthly bookings. Uh, this year's uh, monthly bookings by this month. It's oh. not yeah. I don't know. It just shows the growth. Yeah. Okay. I think I got the notice that we are about out of time, so I think we can do one or two questions. Drivers, uh, I saw that drivers can also rate the clients. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. This is this was actually the topic why I almost got late. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So because uh, essentially we want to do like best experience for driver and for client. So if there are clients who are abusing, really, like. Uh, uh, Taxi driver made an example that he drove like 15 kilometers and then client didn't didn't show like it, it's a bad behavior, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to make it test for both sides and and get the quality as high as possible. Where can I see my rating? <laughs> 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 well, in our systems. Ask, ask your friend, the taxi driver. <laughs> yeah. Have a question like. People say that the most uh, successful systems are hacked or abused. What about your experience? Mm, well, we have seen some abuse, but it's it's quite small percentage. But how people abuse systems? Just order mm. and not come? Or? <coughs> it's uh, well, some are maybe maybe a bit careless about thinking uh, like like ordering and cancelling but of course uh, <coughs> it means if you get like really bad ratings then then that's not good for you also because driver can see okay I, I, uh, I, I don't want this client because it always behaves but I think that's a fair question then where I can see my rating because maybe I don't even know that they rate me I would behave better <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no, you know. okay well we have to think about that then <laughs> About how to see that, yeah. And then when you have low rating, you can pay money for rating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, usually you don't get... If you pay extra for the taxi driver, they give you a higher rate. <laughs> well, they don't give a bad rating if you don't really do something really bad, because you are the customers, so why to give a bad rating? So there are many hands. Okay, uh, in two words, uh, what's uh, your most important secret is uh, compared to competing uh, applications? Mm. <laughs> I think uh, fir first of all, so first of all, we are working with taxi companies, so we are making their life better. So we are trying to transform this industry to be better. So this is this is one thing, and also that we are really keen on quality and user experience. These these are the like top priorities for us. Mm -hmm. uh, are you running on your own cloud? Uh, yeah. Okay. Good question. Question was: Are we running on our own cloud or somebody else's? So we are running on currently our own bare metal. Uh, we t-test uh, cloud. Uh, I don't tell the provider, but but basically virtual machines. And what happened that uh, they scheduled the updates uh, when there's nobody working, which means Saturday night at two o'clock. 
which is the top time <laughs> in the taxis. <laughs> so, so, so that didn't work so, so well for us. But, but this doesn't mean that uh, we are actually moving some parts uh, of the systems to cloud. So our system is actually very well suitable for cloud, but uh, it's not the top priority to do that, but we will move some parts, for example, statistics. Like imagine how much data you get uh, from thousands of cars updating uh, their location every few seconds. But you can do a lot of lot of, with that data. So these things are very well suitable for cloud, and we are moving those parts. Okay, one more question. Yeah, one one last question. So from there. How do you deal with drivers who are not licensed to be a taxi? Uh, so question was how do we deal with drivers who are not licensed to be a taxi driver? Yes. So How do you verify that this is a uh, So this is not really our our <laughs> like like main business. Uh, I mean, uh, we don't. I think we do, we don't check that. Martin, Martin, maybe you can answer that. Yeah. Yeah. I think in general we only accept licensed taxis. But uh, I think in Tallinn there is one company who is trying with rental cars, so they are not officially taxis, but they are rental cars with drivers. <laughs> one, one, one provider, but yeah, mostly like 99% of cars are licensed taxis. Yeah. Okay, so that was the last question. So thank you everybody.